Retrieval practice is a really great way to learn information. And retrieval practice just involves bringing the information to mind. But once you've decided to use retrieval practice, a few questions come up. Like what formats of retrieval practice should we use in the classroom? And what retrieval practice formats should students use on their own? Well, one of the easiest ways to implement retrieval practice is through quizzing. And instructors can give students quizzes in the classroom, either low stakes or no stakes, or they can give questions for the students to bring home and do as practice. But even once we're talking about quizzing, there are still a number of formats that we could talk about. Short answer and multiple choice questions are the retrieval formats that are most frequently implemented in the classroom already. And in one case, the students have to produce the answer. And in the other case, the students have to select which answer is best among a number of alternatives. And so we can ask, are both of these equally effective at producing learning? And then what about the practicality issue? So certainly if quizzes are easier to grade, especially when teachers have a lot of students or when they're implementing frequent quizzes in the classroom, ease of grading matters. We could also ask what happens if we combine the two? So if we give students short answer and multiple choice questions, what happens then? We can call this a hybrid format. Well, in a series of experiments that I conducted and published in 2014, I asked about these exact questions. I investigated the differences in learning among different formats like short answer, multiple choice, and these hybrid formats. And just to give you an idea of what this looked like in the experiment, during the hybrid format, students would first get a short answer question on the screen. The question would come up and they would be required to type out the answer if they knew it and then press next. What makes this different from a regular old short answer format is that then the exact same question stayed, but a number of alternatives showed up on the screen. And at that point, students were required to then recognize the answer. The idea here being that students are getting the benefit because they're getting to produce the answer, but it's also a little bit easier to grade and teachers can look and see which questions students got right sort of at a glance. The full design of the experiments looked like this, and this is one example among a set of experiments. During the first phase, students studied some information on the screen. It was just like what you would take out of a textbook. Then they practiced retrieval, and in this experiment, the students either answered questions in the multiple choice format, in the short answer format, in the hybrid format, or we had a fourth control group that didn't practice retrieval so that we could compare to see how much retrieval practice was benefiting learning compared to just reading the information. All of the students then got feedback, and the feedback was presented as brief sentences that described the question and the answer. So this way we were able to give the control group the feedback. They weren't confused because they weren't answering any questions, they just thought that they were reading statements from that passage. Whereas the students who'd answered the questions recognized, oh, these are the questions and answers in statements for me. And then the students went home and came back to the lab one week later. And they were given a final short answer assessment. And this is where we can measure how well they've learned. It's like a final test that we're actually using to measure learning. And here's what we found on that final short answer assessment. Students who practiced retrieval performed much better than the students who only studied. And the overall effect size across a number of different experiments was between 1.22 and 1.31. This effect size just measures the relative difference of these different conditions. In statistics, we might say that an effect size of 0.8 is pretty large. So here we're getting a large learning benefit of practicing retrieval compared to just reading and then rereading target statements. But then when we look at the overall difference between formats, we see that the effect is relatively small, only about 0.05 across experiments. And what this means is that retrieval practice produced learning, but the type of retrieval that the students engaged in didn't have much of a difference. 
Why aren't there big differences between formats? Well, it probably has something to do with the fact that producing the answer can be quite good for you, and you can guess on multiple choice questions. But at the same time, on multiple choice questions, you're more likely to be successful, and you're more likely to see the correct answer. All in all, when you compare these different formats, it seems like there isn't a huge difference. So the takeaway message is that teachers and students can utilize really whatever type of retrieval practice is going to be the most convenient for them, whatever is going to fit best within that day in the classroom, fit best into the homework, fit best for the specific topic that you're doing, or even the size of the classroom you're probably not gonna see huge differences between formats. That's what my studies show and what some other studies have shown since then. The important thing is that you're implementing retrieval practice into the classroom and that students are engaging in retrieval practice, learning to do that when they're at home, studying on their own. Bringing information to mind is an extremely powerful way for students to learn.